Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we will be looking at the y equals mx plus b, or in other words, the slope-intercept form of a line. We're going to create an equation from a graph. There are a couple of things we need to know before we can do this, so let's get started. First off, we have to understand what the slope-intercept form of a line is. This y equals mx plus b. There are two parts to this. There's actually four parts, I guess. The x value, the y value, and then there's that m and b. m is a letter that is used to represent slope. And b is the letter used to represent the place where the line crosses the y-axis. This is called the y-intercept. So let me show you an example. If I have this equation, y equals 3x plus 2, that means that this line has a slope of 3, and it crosses the y-axis, or the vertical axis, at the point 0, 2. That's some important information. Now, we're going to have to touch on a couple of things before we can look at a line and be able to create our own slope-intercept equation. Let's talk about those things. If you are not given the slope and the y-intercept, you are going to have to find the slope. So I'm going to show you how to find the slope if you're given a graph. I'll show you how to find the slope if you're given just two points. I'll show you how to find the y-intercept from a graph, and also how to find the y-intercept from an equation. So we're going to talk about all four of these things, and then we're going to come back to that y equals mx plus b equation. So hopefully we can do this pretty quickly. So looking at this line, here are some steps for finding the slope when you're given a graph. First off, you're going to pick two points that are pretty clearly marked. Here's an example, 1, 5, and 2, 7. Notice I didn't pick a point like this, negative, negative 1 half and positive 2. That would be a really difficult point to work with. So you want to pick two points that are pretty clear and are going to be easy to work with. I like working with positive numbers. Um, then I'm going to find the rise. The rise is the change up and down, or the change in the y values. So I can find this in two ways. One, I can actually look and see how far it moves up or down from one point to the next. And the other way is that I can actually subtract my y values. My 7 minus 5 is 2, or I can just look at it and say it changed by 2. The next step is that I find my run, or how much it changes from side to side between these two points. The run is 1, it changes just 1, it increases from 1 to 2. So we can again find this mathematically by subtracting the second x value minus the first x value, and that'll give us 1, or we can just look at it and figure out that it's 1. Either way, we have now found the rise and the run. When we write this as a fraction, that is the slope. The slope is equal to the rise over the run. So we can write this as the slope is 2 over 1, or in other words, my slope is 2. So that's how we would find the slope if we're given a graph. In this next example, I'm going to show you very briefly how to find the slope if you're given two points. This topic could take up an entire lesson, so please, this is just a, a quick overview. If you need a, a full lesson on this, you can definitely um, find that on my, on my YouTube channel. So here is the equation for slope. Don't let that be too confusing. It's the second y value minus the first y value. So their second y value is 3, and our first y value is 1. Our second x value is 12, our first x value is 4. So we're just plugging in numbers. 3 minus 1 is 2, and 12 minus 4 is 8. We'll reduce this fraction to lowest terms and get a slope of 1 fourth. So again, brief overview. This is definitely not a lesson on how to use the slope equation, but you can find the slope if you're given two points. The next topic is how to find your y-intercept. There's several ways you can do that. If you're given a graph, you look at where the line crosses the y-axis. That's what the y-intercept is. Sometimes you'll just be told that the y-intercept is whatever, and then you can plug it directly into the equation. And the third way that you find your y-intercept is actually a little bit more complicated, so I'll show this one to you. But that's if you're given an equation, 
you just set the x value equal to 0. Let me show you why that works. Here's a graph that I have here. If, if I'm going to plot a couple of points on here, 0, 6, 0, 1, 0, negative 4, are the things that you are noticing about this. Each of these points is on the y-axis, and each of them has a, a coordinate where x is equal to 0. That is how you would find the x or the y-intercept of an equation. All you have to do is set the x value to 0, and you'll find out where the equation crosses the y-axis. I'll show you a quick example. Here's our equation, 3x minus 4y equals 20. So if I set my x value equal to 0 and plug it into the equation, it'll look like this. 3 times 0 minus 4y equals 20. 3 times 0 is 0, so now I have four, negative 4y is equal to 20. I'll divide both sides by negative 4 and get my final answer that y is equal to negative 5. That means that this equation, 3x minus 4y equals 20, crosses the y-axis at the point 0, negative 5. So that's how you can find the y-intercept from an equation. You often will not have to do this. I just wanted to include it in the video in case you're ever asked to do that. You'll have a reference of how to, how to solve that. So now that we've talked about all the different ways to find slope and the different ways you can find the y-intercept, the easy part's left, all right? All we need to do from now on is just plug those values into the equation. M is slope, B is your y-intercept, and you're good to go. So let's do two questions where we're given a graph and we have to find the slope, y-intercept, and plug them into the equation. Then we'll be done with this lesson. So I want you to find the equation of this line. First off, we need to find our slope. So we're going to pick two points that are nice and clear. I've picked these two points. I'm going to find the rise or the change up and down. In this case, it changes up and down by 1. I'm going to find the run or how much it changes from side to side. And my run is 3. It changes 3 side to side for every 1 that it goes up. That means my slope or my rise over my run is equal to one third. It's a fraction, and that's perfectly okay. Now I need to find my y-intercept. It's easy with a graph like this that nicely crosses my y-axis. I can point to it right there. My y-intercept is equal to two. It crosses at the point zero, two. So I'm going to plug in my slope and my y-intercept into the equation. My slope is one-third, my y-intercept is two, therefore my equation would be y equals one-third x plus two. Let's do one more. I want you to find the equation of this line. First off, I'm gonna pick two points that are nice and clear. Boom, zero, zero, and negative two, positive three. I'm going to find the rise or the change up and down. In this case, our rise is a negative number. In other words, when you start moving from left to right, your line is going down. And that's okay. It's okay to have a negative slope. It doesn't hurt anything. So our rise is negative 3. And our run is how much it changes from, from right to left or from left to right. And that is 2. Okay, so from, from left to right, it changes by 2. When we're looking up and down, it changes by negative 3, or it drops 3 places. I'm going to write that as a fraction of negative 3 over 2. So that is my slope. My y-intercept in this equation is 0. I have a y-intercept of 0, 0. It crosses through the origin. So my equation actually is going to be pretty straightforward. My equation is going to be y is equal to negative 3 over 2x. I wouldn't say plus 0 on the end, but that would be where that um, y-intercept would go if you included that. But lines that have that pass through the origin are simply written as y equals mx, or the slope times x. I hope that that lesson's been helpful for you in showing you how to write equations when you're given a line. Here are your common core and, and PA eligible content. Have a